Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Barry Beckham. I've made a couple of recent videos where I've given them the title of The High Cost of Small Errors and this video follows a similar pattern. I've had the opportunity to review the images of another photographer who's keen to learn and who actively seeks out constructive comments. Of course it's very easy to be clever with hindsight, but if digital photography has given us one very useful thing, it's the ability to see and review all the settings we've used. Now this is especially important when we're reviewing our failures. We need to know why they failed or we have no chance to improve. If we don't use that EXIF data or realise what it's telling us, we'll not move forward. What we're viewing here in Adobe's Bridge is all of the images that the author shot of this particular parrot. These are not a few that I've lifted from a much larger batch. If we look at the technical information shown below each of these thumbnails, we'll see that most of them are identical. They was all shot with a 400mm lens. Every single image had an ISO set of 640 and the f-stop was 6.7. Most of the time the shutter speed was a 500th of a second but you'll notice there's just three of these images where the shutter speed has dropped off to 350th of a second. Aperture priority was what the author used here. Now as we view these nine images in Bridge, all of them look pretty good. What I'd like to do though is to use the review mode within Bridge to sort through these images to sort out those which we may want to manipulate further and identify any of those that may have some faults. Now I'd like to draw your attention to the last two images of this batch because here the parrot is at a very nice angle and there's water dripping from the beak back into the lake. So they look to be particularly positive images to use. So let's set up review mode by selecting the first image in this batch, holding the shift key and selecting the last and all those in between will be selected. Nine in our case here, but it could be a lot more. Either hit control B or go back to the top left of the screen to the option which the label says refine and right at the top there we have review mode. Now we've got an arrow bottom left corner which will take us to the left. In other words, scroll these images around. We have one at the bottom right. And to remove an image from review mode, it's not removing it from the computer, just the few we're viewing, we can use the down arrow in the center of the screen or the down arrow on our cursor control keys. The cursor control keys I think are a little more convenient. And if I tap the one to the right, you can see how this review mode works. We can quickly scroll through all of the images and we can see those we may want to work on, those we may not. We can even zoom in and to make life even a little easier, we can apply a label too. Now as you can see here I've brought my selection back to begin with image number one. If I bring my cursor down onto the image and I double click I can bring up my magnifier and if I position that right by the eye and the beak I can see a little bit of noise that we may have to deal with but I can also see that this image is nice and sharp. So what I could do here to identify that this image has possibilities is to apply a label. Now I'm going to use the number 8 key to apply a green label. Now I can use the arrows on my keyboard, the cursor control keys, to skip to the next image. There you can see this one also looks pretty sharp, so I can touch the 8 key again and give that a green label. 
This one, I just need to change this a little bit. This one again is not a problem. I don't think it's quite as nice as the previous. So maybe I'll change and give this a slightly different color. Let's say a yellow. And once again, we'll tab to the right with the cursor control keys. Now this one is losing a bit of sharpness. You can see there's some movement there and the head is rather lost in the water. So maybe this is a case for the number six key, which is a red label. We can't do too much with this. It's just not sharp enough. Let's move to the next one on the right. Again, we need to move the magnifier, but we've got another sharp image. So the eight key gives it a green label. You can see how convenient this is, but we've got a couple of shocks coming, I think. Here's another one where the animal is perfectly sharp. So once again, we can give that a green label. Now we're moving to the final few. This one with the animal with its head in the water looks pretty good. It's losing quite a bit of the beak, but it's sharp. So we could say we'll give that a green label and it's hidden behind that little magnifier. But the next one we're going to look at and the one after that are the two which are my favourites. We can see the water dripping off the bird. But when we look at it, we can see that we haven't got a sharp image. The fact that the bird is actually dipping its head in the water and drinking has just been a little bit too much for the shutter speed that was used here. Which is a terrible shame, which means we've got to give this a number six key and a red label. But the best one of all is coming up, so let's hope we've got that a little better. There we can see the water dripping off the beak. That would be a great one to manipulate. Let's take a closer look. What a shame. We just don't have critical sharpness. And once again, we're going to need to give this a red label. Now, as I bring you back into Photoshop's bridge, I think these nine images can tell us an awful lot about what's gone wrong and what we need to do about it in the future. Because certainly we can say here that a small error has given us quite a high cost. The two best images in a batch of nine we can't use. Now as we look at all nine thumbnails with the technical details we can see there and the knowledge we've just gained from looking at them critically within review mode, what would we do differently had we come across this situation and we could rewind time? I think the very first thing I would say is that this isn't one of those situations which we stumble on every day. So when we do, isn't this a time where we switch our camera to the fast continuous shooting mode? Surely in this situation where the bird was there for a number of minutes drinking, we should have a lot more images than this. What the author's done here is taken these images, looked at them on the back of the camera. They all look great when we see them on that LCD and they've walked away to look for a different subject, not realizing the best two shots they took have failed. The lens that the author was using here is a 400 millimeter Canon and it's image stabilized. But what we need to remember with image stabilized lenses is as good as they are, the image stabilization is designed to keep us still. Now in the shots we're looking at here, it's done the job superbly well. We're shooting a 400 millimeter lens at a 500 of a second, so we should be pretty good. And we can see with the two images we have on screen, we are, because the animal itself is static. But as we look at the last two images of this particular batch, we can see that when the bird is actually moving, then the shutter speed wasn't quite adequate. And as luck would have it, these are the two shots where the shutter speed has dropped to 350th of a second rather than 500. So in hindsight, and if we could roll back time and do this again, to capture these two shots, 
what we're going to require is a slightly faster shutter speed. To obtain a faster shutter speed, we would need to allow more light into the lens. But given the focal length, I think f6.7 was just about the maximum. So there's only one way we can increase our shutter speed here, and that would be to increase the ISO. I think it should have been increased to at least 800, maybe even 1600. Sure, we would have introduced just a little more noise, but if we'd captured a really sharp shot with these last two, there's always something we can do about noise when we open the image into Adobe Camera Raw, but we can do precious little with an image that isn't sharp, especially when it's on the bird's head and eye, the critical part. So as we look at all of the images together again, we can see how small errors come at quite a high cost. Because now if we wanted to work through one or a number of these images through Adobe Camera Raw, already before we've done any work at all, we're picking the second best. And that's a shame. If I were to select an image from this batch, I think I would choose this one, number five up at the top right. I do like the angle of the parrot on the sticks, and it's very sharp. But I think number seven maybe just has the edge. I'd like the face of the bird to be slightly out of the water a little more, but I think we could work with that one. With the image opened up into Adobe Camera Raw, I'm going to start with a crop because as you can see, the main focus is right in the center of the screen. So picking up my crop tool, I'm going to bring in the crop from the right hand side, certainly from the top down to those broken sticks there. You can see that tidies up the composition. Maybe we can come up a little at the bottom and a little at the left just to get rid of that stick going in the water. I think that's a pretty good place to start. Touch the Enter key to commit that. Control 0 will fit this on screen. What I'd like to do next is to look in the Detail tab at the noise in this image. To do that, I've right clicked the image and increased the size to 200%. I'm going to go to my Detail tab on the right hand side. I'm going to push the noise reduction up to about 35 and take a look at the effect. It looks pretty good. It looks to be about as much as I want to give. If I go too far, it gets a little too smooth. I think somewhere around 30, 34 is going to give me the noise suppression that I require. Now I'm going to go back to my basic tab and I'll also hit control zero to fit the image on screen. I'm going to warm the image just a little bit, not much. And I'm going to come down to, I'm looking at the histogram at the top of the page there. I think we could do with maybe a little bit more exposure all round. And maybe a little more of the highlights and a little touch on the white. So you can see it getting a bit more sparkle into the shot. I don't think we want any shadows. We can, when I say shadows, I was thinking of blacks, not these shadows, because I'd like to come back here and push them up a little bit, throw a little bit of light into the bird, but it has affected the outer edge. So in doing that, I'm going to go down and just give a little mid-tone contrast with clarity. Maybe I'll hit a little bit of vibrance. And I think what I do next is to give this a healthy vignette. I'm going to select my radial filter and I'll click and drag. I want something like that. Maybe I can maneuver this around to get the shape that I want. Right click inside to reset those settings. Hit the V key to hide that and just drop the exposure down. Really focus our attention on the bird. And maybe a little bit of localized lightness on the bird, just to lift it a little more. To do that, I'll select my adjustment brush. I'm going to push the exposure up a little bit, maybe the shadows up a little more. 
maybe even a little more color and I'll just touch that control key click and drag to get the image big use the spacebar to click and drag to maneuver it in position and the square bracket keys sorry I'm hitting you with a number of keys here the square bracket keys to the right of the letter P to increase the size looking over the flow is 6% which looks about right for what I want to do here maybe a bit on the high side but we'll live with that just for the moment maybe I've got a little too much exposure here I'll temper that just a bit once we begin to see what we're doing we can always temper these tools we're using but here I can bring up the animal a little bit making sure not to go outside but don't worry if you do because if you look up at the top right you've got a little eraser there so if you overly mask this you can always come back and do a repair do we need a little bit in a reflection maybe I'll just be a bit careful here not to do it too much control zero maybe just one or two other little touches with little bits of flotsam and jetsam in the water just to take away those little spots and I think we've got a half decent image but it'll always ever be our second best. So there's the original image just before we pushed it through Adobe Camera Raw. And here's the final image, but it would have been much nicer if we could have chosen one of those last two thumbnails. I'll see you next time.